I'll use that other one in a little bit. Hallelujah. So, uh, tonight as we begin, Brother Robert Bateman is, uh, he should be right now on his way to Lady of the Lake Hospital in Baton Rouge. Um, his enzymes, there were some enzymes in his heart that are elevated. He's been having heart problems for the last, for a while. And, you know, I mean, all the deacons know every time I've seen him for what? Six or eight weeks I've been saying there's something wrong with his color. And I'll say, Brother Robert, you okay? Now, y'all would never guess what Brother Robert tell you, but I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> but he, he said today that um, he's been getting some pain and it hasn't went away today, of course. And, um, but he, I talked to him. He, he sounds good. And, of course, I said, you want me to tell him everything? He said, tell him I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> but I want y'all to pray for Brother Robert uh, Bateman. And, and probably one of his sisters or one of his daughters would be spending the diet, night with him down there because and, and, there's no way he's going to be able to see a doctor tonight unless he has something, uh, <clears throat> a, a, a serious attack. But keep Robert, he, he went to Centerville. And uh, they said they was on their way right then when I left a while ago to uh, pick him up in the ambulance. So keep him in your prayers. Next Sunday night, our youth group is going to go down to a church in Louisiana. And they're going to do um, kind of what they did here for Christmas. But they're going to uh, use a couple more songs besides that. And uh, I was hoping and praying that they would get a chance to go somewhere besides just their usual church group. I want them to see some different things and, and experience. And uh, they'll get to witness and testify to some people. And I imagine some people will get a chance to witness and testify to them too. But I want you to pray for our youth group in Tedra um, and just pray about as, as they're traveling down there. You know, it's a little ways down there. And it's a little ways back up here. And they'll be going to Dole, right? So they're going to go down there to Dole. And I'm trying to get some more churches uh, to participate. A lot of churches don't have services anymore on Sunday night. So, guess what? <laughs> so, uh, just be praying for them that the Holy Spirit will just lead them and guide them and use them in their presentation. And we've had a lot of people that's been sick. Uh, Miss Manette is going to be having surgery uh, in February on her. She's going to have a knee replacement. And so, I want you to remember Miss Manette. Uh, When we say this Hattiesburg, Miss Manette, it's going to be down there in Hattiesburg. So y'all remember Miss Manette, is, she's going to be going through that. And she'll have a, a, just a speedy recovery and uh, just keep them in prayer. Who else do we have? Anybody get pipes break? Y'all pretty blessed. Amen. Y'all remember uh, Mickey over here? Mickey's pipes broke. I think I think they're fixed, but Mickey's pipes had broken. But I think they have them. I think they have them fixed. But that cold weather was getting a lot of them. Let's open up in prayer tonight, Brother Ellis. Would you lead us in prayer tonight?
sing three songs tonight. I want y'all to sing with me on these three. And I'm going to sing one let, when we get through with these three by myself. But these three here, I want you to sing with me, okay? He keeps me singing, number 425. tell Jesus. Every time I sing this song, I think of my mama. She used to sing this song. I've heard her sing it many a time. I must tell Jesus.
That's a great song, isn't it? Amen. I must tell Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can help us. I am resolved, the real one. song right here that all of us need to apply to our lives. I'd rather have Jesus than anything that I know.
She's all that my hungry spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and be let him lead. Sing his chorus with me. Than to be the king of a vast domain. Are beheld and sins dress away. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Jesus than anybody that I know. Thank you. Amen. We won't have to hold out on any. We'll just refresh them up. If you'll open your Bibles up to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verses 52 through 54. So, I get to preach to the choir tonight. You know, one of the great things is, though, even as you're looking in here, I want you to remember there's over 18 just youth over there, so you, everybody else, you're talking around 20-something over there, and then you have your children's over there also. So when you look at that, remember you're scattered throughout this particular church and stuff, different ones meeting. Sometimes we forget that there's people out there meeting all around us right now. I want to talk to you about something. What are you going to do when the trumpet sounds? Do you all know what I'm talking about? When the trumpet sounds, that last trumpet sounds. When the last trumpet sounds, there's going to be a lot of things that take place. And, and I, just want to <laughs> I just want to take a moment. I just want to take a moment, and I want to look at Scripture tonight. And I want us to just look. Because when that trumpet sounds, it's going to be late to do some certain things in our lives. You, you've got the last call. It's the last moments. It's the last opportunity that we have. You know, I've been, I've been listening to this. I was sitting there as I was thinking, I was listening to Brother Raymond. I was thinking about how many times I heard these preachers say this. And even as I get older, I see all the Bible fulfilled before my very eyes. And I start thinking about all the old preachers I've known in my time and my different professors and different things that I had and, and as we studied the scriptures. And I'm looking as the day grows to the close and the old dinner bells are sounding. I'm wondering, is there some of my job that's not going to be completed? Am I going to leave something out that I should be doing? Is there something I need to take care of before it sounds? So I want to read these scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you can stand with me if you're physically able. Chapter 15, we're going to look at verses 52. We're going to read through 54 right there. It says, In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and the mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on the immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Let's use that in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your holy presence tonight, Father, and even as we're here, Lord, I remember, I remember Dr. Lee as he was making his presentation. Oh, Father, the viv vividness of, Lord, the last trump. And I pray, Father, tonight, that, Lord, our hearts prepared and that our task will be completed. But, Father, we know that there's so much yet to be done. Oh, Father, till the day the trumpet sounds, I pray that you find each and every one of us busy. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. You may be seated. So when we look at this right here, you know, one of the things, when I was at school, one of my professors was doing a presentation, and he was preaching on this particular sermon. And I, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that mine's not even comparable to what he was doing because at that day, he was preaching to a lot of college students and professors and, and, and uh, different pastors around the community. And the whole sanctuary was filled up. And as he was preaching on that, and he was talking about those last days, 
he had trumpets set up, which we couldn't see because they were on the second floor of the church. And on that second floor, they had all these long, these particular long trumpets there. And right there at that moment when he was getting to that point, the trumpet will sound. All of a sudden, in this particular part of the sermon there where he had read this scripture, all of a sudden the trumpet started sounding. Now what was so interesting at that point is the look on people's faces when those trumpets sounded. Now I wasn't quite sure, I can't say if it was fear, if it was shock, it was surprise. But I got to thinking about how we're going to react when the trumpet sounds. Well, how do you think, you know, when you hear this, because it's so easy, we, we read these particular scriptures, I, I read this particular scripture a lot, I do it a lot at, at, at different funerals and services and stuff, and it's meant to be the encouragement of knowing that, you know what, this is not the end, that we will see each other again. But that trumpet's going to sound, is going to call us up one of these days, and that the dead in Christ shall rise first. But when that trumpet sounds, the people here will be raptured out of this place. But the thing is, is your job, is your task going to be completed? Are you going to have done what needs to be done? Scripture tells us that we're to be watching and ready for that last moment. I've heard it since I was a child. I've heard it all the way throughout my life. Even when, when I was just lost in the heathen and going about, I knew these particular scriptures right here and the possibility of, of that trumpet sounding. But I'll be honest with you, the realization of it really sounding how when I, was I going to react? You see, God saved us to be busy serving Him. And we've, we've gotten to the place, and I was, I was listening to some people, and even today, how people have grown where it's, it's just about like going to a restaurant when you go to a church anymore. It's more about, you know, it's, it's more about what people can do for me or what they can serve me with or, or something like this. We, we don't look at it the proper way that we've been called, each and every one of us, to be busy serving now, I've heard had people say, well, you know, I, I served when I was younger. I served in this, this room over here in the Sunday school class and, and over there. Let me tell you what. You don't have time to retire. I'm just going to be honest with you. You don't have time to retire. Now, whether I even told this to Miss Addie, and she was in the nursing home. She says, <coughs> Brother Blaine, she says, what good am I anymore? I'm just laid up here. I said, you can be praying for me. And I says, every one of these people, I said, your church comes to you serving you all day long. And you can testify to your faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you're at. We, we've been called to be servants of the risen Savior. Now, it looks to me that it's really late in the day when it comes to the job. It's really late in the day. And any of you have ever worked construction and stuff, you know it's almost time for the sound of the trumpet to rip. See, the Lord is, is <laughs> he's becoming a stranger in this land. I saw a, a, an interview, and, and I was seeing, of all things, a, a debate between a young individual, a beautiful young woman who was talking about divorce, and you actually heard me talk about it this morning in the sermon, and I saw another young man who was representing life. And I thought, you know, he did a really good job in his presentation. But what shocked me about this beautiful young lady was that she just had no relationship with Jesus Christ whatsoever. She had no concept of life. She had no concept of what she was speaking of. She thought she was being compassionate for an individual that more than likely she would never meet in the first place, but she never thought about the child. In our land today, it seems so strange. We've, we've placed God, in, and you can do and, and worship every single God except Jesus Christ. He's become so strange in this land that I can almost see the writing on the wall where we're going to be very persecuted in a short distance. It may not be my lifetime, but it's not going to be a long time from now. Because I'm telling you, when you look around where they're suing all these different places, they're suing them if, if they won't make these, these heathen birthday cakes and, and they won't make these heathen cupcakes and they won't do heathen things that's against their faith, they're going to arrest them and they're going to sue them. They're going to take them for whatever money they have. When that trumpet sounds, though, the question is, have we done all that we can do for the glory of God in the time that we've been given on this earth? I've had a lot of friends that's passed away here lately in their 50s. I've had some pass away in their 40s. And I've had some that have passed away in their 70s. And I have some right now that are dying that are in their 60s and in also in their 90s. The question is, though, if I went to them, did you do what God has called you to do for the glory of the kingdom? Now, one of the things we have to look at in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, for he says, at the acceptable time, 
I listen to you, and on the day of salvation, I help you. Behold, behold, now is the acceptable time. Get that? Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. One of the things that people have to realize, when you're going out here, I'm telling you, what would you do? What would be on your heart right now if the rapture takes place? Who would be on your heart? Who would you have wished that you had told the truth to at that particular moment, right before that trumpet sounded, so that they would know Jesus Christ? Because when the trumpet sounds, it's not going to be I meant to go over to, to tell my son or my, my daughter or, or my daughter-in-law or my son-in-law or, or my neighbor or my friend or my brother or my sister or my mama or my husband or my wife. It's going to be too late to say I meant to because it's over with then. And they're facing something that's all eternal. You can't be saying, well, I, I wanted to do this, but I was so busy in my life. I had so much I needed to take care of. There were so many other things, and, and it would have, it would have interrupted our relationship. What if it would have broken our relationship? When you're separated from somebody that you love for all eternity, you don't want to waste this time. I know you didn't come here on a Sunday night to hear this. This is something that's breaking my heart because I know so many people are out there thinking, I wanted to do it. I wanted to, Brother Blaine. I, I meant to do it. I, I should have done this. I, I, I could have done it because I know how to give them uh, the love of Jesus Christ. But there were so many other things. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late for them to be saved, and it's going to be too late for you to go witness to them. See, the day of salvation is today. The time to knock on the door is today. The time to get out of your comfort zone is today. Well, what if it, what if it, what if it doesn't happen? Let me tell you something, and you've got grace. You've been given grace for a reason. But we've given ourselves so many excuses of why we cannot tell the truth about the conviction that we have. Are you a child of the king? Did he save you? If he saved you, then why are you holding back on giving your testimony to people that you supposedly love? Do I wish to hurt your feelings? No. Do I want to stomp on your toes? No. Do I want you to understand that it's 911 and we're on life support? And just as I was in there at Mr. Roberts, I kept looking at that thing going off. I, that heart monitor and them oxygen levels. Now, y'all don't understand how many times I've sat with people with that. You don't know how many times I've sat listening to those machines and, 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 and those, those things going beep, 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 and all the different noises and stuff like this. And as I was sitting there, I was wondering, how many people haven't heard the truth? I know where Mr. Robert is, and I know where Mr. Robert's going, but I don't even know if this guy who's coming in here and checking his blood pressure knows. It's going to be too late for me to be a testimony, and it's going to be too late for them to seek God's face when the trumpet sounds. They're not going to be able to live off what you gave them. They're going to have to have a personal relationship with Christ, or they face the most hazardous of times. It's going to be too late to go out there when the trumpet sounds to search for your family and say, I wonder where they're at. I wonder if they're serving the Lord. I wonder if they're out there serving God. I'm wondering if they're born-again believers. I'm wondering if they're truly children of God. It's going to be too late to go over there and plead with them and say, listen, son, listen, daughter, listen, family. I'm telling you, unless you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, you're not going to enter the gates of heaven. We won't see each other again. We will never meet again unless you give your heart to Christ. Don't just tell me something to make me feel good. Do you understand how important this is, child? Do you understand? that you're facing the darkness of eternity separated from Christ himself. Do you understand what this means, son? Do you understand what this means, my baby? It's going to be too late for you to look for your family then. Y'all might get along real hunky-dory right now. And everything might be right. But it's going to be too late for you to take the time to go knock on their doors anymore. It's going to be too late.
for you to, to pray for your family, if you haven't been praying for them, that Christ would pierce their hearts and awaken them. It's going to be too late for you to, to plead and beg. It's going to be too late to proclaim Christ to them. It's going to be too late. How many of y'all love it when y'all show up late to like meetings and stuff? How many men? <laughs> Let's ask this. Let me rephrase it. I'm going to pick on you so you're preacher's way. What time is late, brother? If me and you have a meeting at 6 o'clock, what time are you late? Uh-huh. Y'all heard that 10 till he's late. You're not even really close to it yet. I don't even want to ask the women because that's why I'm preaching the whole sermon. Because when that trumpet sounds, where is my children going to be at? See, I, I didn't come to entertain you tonight. I, I didn't come to give you a bunch of theology. I came to share with you something that's breaking my heart because I'm watching our children and our families going to hell in a handbag because it's, it's not because no one's evil or bad, but everybody wants to be a peacemaker. Everybody wants to be somebody who's loved and adored. Don't we all? But sometimes you've got to be the one who in love, because it says do it in love, must speak truth. But can you imagine, you know, and y'all have heard my testimony so many times, you know, my dad sitting across from me, because it's so hard for y'all to picture me lost, because all you see is a fat preacher. But I was lost. Not only was I lost, I was passing my condition to my child, my little daughter, and my pop sat across from me, and he told me the truth. I led you to know Christ, and you chose not to. Won't you at least give your daughter a chance to know him and to go to heaven? You see, that's not something that everybody wants to hear, especially when you're going to one of your cousin's funerals. But see, it's late in the day. And the trumpet's going to sound. And your family could be rich. Your family could be poor. Your family can be in high society with their nose touching the roof. Or they can be dragging along the ground. Their spiritual condition is their relationship to Christ. Your spiritual position is how you're going to testify to them about Christ. It says that we should go out into the, the, the wayside and in, in, in the hedgerows and everywhere else. And to compel them to come in. Not necessarily to a church. What it means is to compel them, to give them the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To, and you've heard me say it several times here lately because it's such a burden. As I'm going out and I speak to the, the young families and the children, I'm telling you, if you don't have a sense of fear for their position in Christ, you're missing the whole story. You can have all the most beautiful things you had for Christmas and you can say, I had the best Christmas I've ever had. We had such a lovely time. Will your children go to heaven or hell? In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, this is what it says. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will open, if I will not open for you, the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. When the trumpet of God sounds and when the people of Christ are called home, it's going to be too late to get all your finances together. It's going to be too, la too late to obey what God has commanded us to do in the first place. It's going to be too late to overcome our selfish com uh, compassions that we have where we store everything up. I've known so many people in my day that did great things, but they left God out of everything. They left the cause of God out of everything. You can leave your children Everything that you possess, it doesn't matter to me. But I'm going to ask you, what are you doing for the cause of Jesus Christ right now? When I was at school, I used to hear people tell me all the time that they were sending their tithe to their children. I want you to listen to it, and you don't have to tell me if you agree or not agree, because I'm going to ask you one thing. What does Scripture say? Now, you can twist it how you want, but I'm going to tell you, there's only one answer. 
they used to send their tithes to their children so to pay their children's bills to go to school. Now, you can send an alm, and you can send an offering, but your tithe cannot go to, to pay no school, even if it's seminary. There's no biblical concept to that because your storehouse is where you go to, not the school. And even though I love the school where I graduated from, and it's one of the finest things that happened in my life, that people took their time to invest in me and to, to feed me and to fill me with the Word of God, but when I look back on that, I start thinking about how many people, I even had people tell me that they literally had savings accounts where they were saving for their children and their grandchildren's uh, going to college. And what they were doing, they said, well, what we do is we put our tithe there because this is a good cause. It is a good cause. Is it not a good cause? It's a good cause. It's a good thing. But I'm going to tell you something else. It is a lack of understanding of the Word of God. See, it's such a wonderful thought for your family, but it sure ain't biblically correct for you. And unless we get our lives lined up with the Scripture, I'm telling you, we can't be a witness if we don't even understand what we're witnessing and testifying to. God has always been, I came out of college debt-free. I worked three jobs, and where I went to school at, listen to me, y'all, you had to have a college exit exam. Do y'all know what that is? In other words, you had to graduate with an exam of college level. In other words, I had to take the same thing that someone who was studying to be a doctor or something else. Florida didn't let you just graduate. And when I did them, that doesn't make me super smart because I'm going to tell you, I took some of that so many times because I liked it, especially the math part of it. I liked that so much. I took it twice. But it's going to be too late when we don't understand that we have to give and do what God has called us to do in the first place. You know, it's so hard when you have a church cleanup day. Y'all know what church cleanup day is? Church cleanup day is where the body of Christ comes together to work on the church of the house of God. And we get together and we, we wipe and we clean and we function. And it's very hard to get a lot of people to come together and get it all coordinated and stuff like this. But I'm going to tell you, it makes a difference because we affirm that God is Lord of Lord and that he's in control of my time and my finances. When the trumpet sounds, you're not going to have time to go back and say, I wish I would have done this. I wish I've given this. I wish I would have paid tithes. I'm not saying it sends you to hell. I had a woman ask me, she says, because I haven't paid tithes, is that going to send me to hell? I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's honoring and recognizing that God is the one who supplied you with all your needs. In John chapter 9, verse 4, this is what it says. It says, we must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Now that's something that ought to be something we all recognize and, and understand right here. It's going to be too late for you to be able to share your faith. So, now we have given classes and everything else on being a witness and a testimony. And each one of us are going to have an opportunity to share your faith. And one of the biggest problems that we face is we listen to Satan who says, I'm too shy. I, I can't do that. It's kind of like witnessing to your own children. You can talk to your children about everything, but can you talk to them about Jesus? I hear people stress all the time, you don't talk about religion and you don't talk about politics. Oh, that's baloney. That's baloney. I ain't worried about the politics with a bunch of relatives because, you know what, Democrats or Republicans, you put them in a sack, you shake them up, and all sorts of funny stuff comes out in the next step when it opens the bag up. But I am concerned that if you believe that I cannot share with my family that Jesus Christ has saved me. And if you don't believe that God will give you an opportunity at your family reunion, at your different situations, to share Christ, I don't know which God you're serving. You see, you've only got so much time, y'all. And men are very time uh, understanding, and, and I'm not saying women aren't. Uh, women are more relaxed about it. But I'm telling you something, you ought to get stressed right now. You, you ought to have the, 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 that compulsion of saying, you know what, I can tell from what I'm seeing, what's happening on earth, everybody calls it, uh, uh, 
what they call it, global warming and all this. Let me tell you what the world's really doing. The world is crying out, come back, Lord Jesus. From every earthquake, for every rainstorm, from every hurricane, from every mudslide, from every rain event, from every cold event, what you're seeing is the fulfillment of Scripture where the world is crying back about the coming return of Jesus Christ. What you're seeing is scripture before your eyes, and what you're listening to is what the world is saying truth. It's, it's, it's global warming, and you know what? All the penguins and, and all, the, all these, they don't even have no ice. They're going to be down here in Mississippi living on ice. It's going to be too late. If you don't recognize the scripture for being fulfilled before your very eyes, it's going to be too late to go back and to testify to those people that you say are so special and so important in your life. There's going to be too late for you to witness to them about the return of Jesus Christ. It's going to be too late to share with them that there's only one way to heaven. It's going to be too late. And if it's just a religion with you, you're going to keep your mouth shut. Because I can keep my mouth shut about being a Republican or anything else. I can keep my mouth shut about that, but I can't keep my mouth shut about the Jesus who saved my rotten, dirty, nasty soul from the very pit of hell. I can't keep my mouth shut about the Savior, Jesus Christ. I can't keep my mouth shut about the one who has supplied my needs. I can't keep my mouth shut about the one who healed my body. I can't keep my mouth shut because I know what he's done for me. What has he done for you? It's going to be too late to go and witness and to go on visitation. I know most of you have grew up here and, and you've been here all your lives. And I've heard you speak. I've heard you speak about this individual and that individual. And I, I always have names brought up. With, there's never a shortage of names. And I am so glad you share the names with me. But let me ask you. Are they important to you? Because if somebody's important to you, what would you be willing to do? Have you ever been amazed at somebody who said, like, you know, this was my sister or my brother, and, and they donated a kidney? Y'all ever heard of that? You've seen somebody give a part of a, of a liver to an individual. They was able to transplant half of somebody's liver, and their liver regenerates. You've seen people who went and put their lives on the line, and they risked it so that some individual could, lie, could live. And you say, man, wow, that's so impressive to me. Well, do you not understand that if people die without Jesus Christ, that they're going to go to hell? So how easy do you reckon it is to get in there and, and cut that liver out of there? You know the liver has nerves. Did y'all know that? Your liver has feeling in it. It's not an organ. It, it, it has pain. Uh, I can tell you, I've had liver biopsies. And it's, it can be very painful. When you go and you testify to somebody about the Christ who's your Savior, it's not the easiest thing that you may do. But it's the most important thing you're ever going to achieve in all your life. You might have brought life into this world, but can you sustain it for all eternity? You can with the ability to share Jesus Christ. You can with the understanding that time, time is ticking away. And unless you recognize it, they're going to miss it. It's going to be too late to knock on that door to that family member and say, I want to share with you something that's changed my life. In Luke chapter 6, verse 37, it says this. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. One of the most important things that you recognize is that as the day grows later and later and shorter and shorter, you only have so much time to get things right with relatives, friends, and neighbors. And a lot of times in our lives, we speak 
out very quickly. We don't fulfill scripture where it says speak slow and listen quickly, all right? So uh, be slow to speak, quick to listen. A lot of times we don't take that word of God into our hearts and something happens and we get so mad and we hold a grudge against somebody or some individual. And we hold it so deep into our hearts that we don't even realize that one day the trumpet's going to sound. And it's going to be too late for you to mend the broken fences that are in your family. Whether it's somebody with your mamas or your daddies or, or, or your husbands or your wives. Let me ask you. Has anybody ever passed away? And you said, I wish I would have. And I'll let you put on the rest of it. I wish I would have. What would you have done? What would you have said? What would you have went and done for them? And let me ask you, is there somebody that you're having a grudge with and, and you maybe won't even speak it to, to no one around you and, and the only one knows maybe is you. And it, maybe it's against me. Maybe I've offended you in, in some way or, 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 or another and, and, and it's hurt you so deeply and you don't want to tell me because I'm the preacher, you know, and you don't want to tell the preacher. But it's eating away at you. Every time you see me, you just absolutely are repulsed. Saying, oh my goodness, I can't believe he's the pastor. What happens is, one of these days, we're never going to have a chance to make it right. I'll never have a chance to make it up with you if I don't know about it. You're never going to have a chance. Can you imagine? I've had people who went to the grave who never got to say, I'm sorry. I love you. You matter. You made a difference in my life. We have so many people out there, and we let these little bitty nitpicking things destroy our entire lives holding on to blood feuds. But one day the trumpet's going to sound. It says, forgive lest ye be forgiven. It says, do not judge. It talks to us in the Word of God. And a lot of times it, it happens right there with our own families. I've seen parents that were separated from children and children separated from parents. And I've seen husbands and wives because no one can ever say, I'm sorry anymore. The day the trumpet sounds, there will be no more sorries. There's going to be no more I wish I would have. In Luke chapter 16, verse 23 through 24, this is what it says. It says, In Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and he saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out, he says, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And sent Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue. For I am in agony in this flame. How many of you believe that scripture is true? I don't think most of us do. I know you say, why, Brother Blaine? We have firemen that break in doors to help complete strangers that they've never met. Saving dogs, cats, chickens, any other critters, lizards up in bowls. And we have people that go into hell. If we really thought somebody was going to hell, I mean, really thought that somebody was going to burn in hell, would we hold on to the Jesus that we know and never tell anyone the truth? Would we hold a grudge? And would we say, when we get to heaven, I was too shy to tell them about you, Lord. I'm sorry. I wish you wouldn't have made me that way. Because you reckon he'd say, I gave you all the power of the universe. 
I gave you the power to achieve all things in my name. And you couldn't share Jesus with one person, even with somebody that we call them our family. It's going to be too late to stay the flames when the trumpet sounds. God's judgment is going to be visible. And there's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be no way to avoid God's judgment without Jesus Christ. Without Christ, you mix, you miss the whole victory celebration. Without Christ, you'll never meet them again if you're a child of God. Without Christ, without Christ, people are going to go to hell. Without Christ, they're never going to experience what the Word of God says. See, when you believe this is truly the Word of God, we quit saying, well, that's blah, blah, their fault, and they're this or they're that. Let me ask you, who are we? We're the children of God, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the ability to pray, and a mountain can be moved. We have the ability to see people healed, the blind to see, the lame to walk. We're able to see people that, that have lived in the chains and bondage all their lives under addictions set free. All they have to do is accept Christ. The most important thing that we can do is to share Jesus before it's too late. I wish I could play a trumpet. I wish I could play a trumpet because I would play it for you. Because when the trumpet sounds, you're going to be excited and you're going to be happy. But not all those that we claim to love is going to be. And they're going to say, I wish I I wish I'd have given my life to Jesus. I wish I would have turned myself around. I wish and it'd be too late. What was that we were singing the other day, Brother Raymond? See, I was just someplace I can't even remember. Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Here's the thing. We're gonna meet Jesus in the air, right? But who's going with us? Who's gonna be there? It's gonna be a great homecoming, right? Who's gonna be absent from the homecoming? You ever went to a homecoming and you say, well, where's so-and-so? I, I can't believe she's not here. Ain't so-and-so's not here. She's always at the family reunion. Well, where's Uncle Billy Bob? Where's, where's Miss Sue at? Where's, where's China? Where's all these different names that they come up? And we say, man, oh, I wish it was that. I, I want to see them so bad. Can you imagine the reunion? At the table of God. Now it says no more sadness, no more goodbyes, no more separation. Now I reckon the good Lord is going to reach in there and take all that kind of memories that would break you down and be removed from you. But now I'm thinking about it. Because when the trumpet sounds, it's going to be too late for all the rest. But we've got the power in the name of Jesus to do all things. If you could bow your heads for just a moment. They're going to they're gonna come play something up here. And here's, here's my question. Just sharing my heart with you tonight. If you can bow your heads just a moment. How many of you have someone on your heart as I was speaking tonight? Someone, someone that you know. that you pray that they would accept Jesus Christ, that their lives would turn around. How many of you know multiple people like that? 
Here's the next thing. How many among our families? So tonight, as they're playing and, and they're, they're going to sing an altar call song, these altars are open. But here's my prayer for you. That the power of the Holy Spirit will give you the words that this week, whether you write it in a card, whether you do it on the phone, I don't care. That you just say, I just want you to know something. Jesus saved me. And he can save you and change your life too. I'm not trying to be religious with you. I want to share with you what Christ has done for me. I want to share with you because one day, one of these days, God's going to call me home. And I want you to be there with me. I want you to be with those loved ones that we have that are born again believers. Tonight, I want you to picture their faces. Each one of these individuals. I want you to picture these people. I want you to picture the ones that you need to forgive. Or need to forgive you. I want you to picture these individuals. And I want you to pray for the opportunity that God will give you the opportunity to be the witness. As they're playing, these altars are open and you want to come and pray. Without him I could do without a sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Do not turn
Bless me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior. to compel 